Hey friends, Ryan here from Endless Summer Hydrangeas and welcome to Garden Gap. Thanks for diving down the rabbit hole to learn all the dirt on hydrangea soil with me. In this video, we're gonna dig a little deeper on fertilizer and soil amendments. Okay, I, I promise I'm done with the soil puns, at least for now. Let's start with the basics. If you haven't already watched our overview on the difference between fertilizers and soil amendments, I would suggest starting there. If you have seen it, welcome to the nuts and bolts talk about how fertilizer really works and how soil amendments actually change the color of your hydrangea bloom. As you'll get to learn with me, everything has to start with food. Literally every dinner is required to have an appetizer. So let's begin this conversation with fertilizer, which is the hydrangea bloom food. If the hydrangea isn't blooming, we don't even need to talk about how we change the color, right? So like we talked about in the overview video, a granular slow release bloom boosting fertilizer is one of the key components to get your hydrangea blooming. So remember my analogy, spring fertilizer is like a cup of coffee in the morning, midsummer fertilizer is like that energy drink to get you through the night. Since you already know the basics, let's talk a little bit more about how the fertilizer works. Now, every yard is completely different because of your soil composition. You may be naturally deficient in some nutrients while others are flush with organic matter that provides all the elements for your plant. You might have sandy soil while others have clay. So this is gonna be somewhat general so that the information can apply to most. If you've got really specific questions for your region or if your hydrangea is showing signs of weakness or leaf discoloration, I would suggest checking with your local extension office and they should be able to help. So each fertilizer has a ratio of elements on the bag called the NPK ratio. This shows the percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the mix. In general, we recommend a fertilizer that has the highest number of phosphorus, which is that middle number, because that's what actually helps promote the bloom production. So if you can't find the exact type of fertilizer, a general 10-10-10 will be okay and still give it some energy. We recommend staying away from a fertilizer that is high in nitrogen, which is that first number on the bag. Nitrogen will grow a big, lush, beautiful green plant, but you want flowers and not just green, right? So either stick with that 10, 10, 10 or a bloom booster that's higher in phosphorus. Give your plants the right food and they'll be much more likely to bloom their heads off. It's like carb loading before the marathon, the right food for the right result. Okay, so now that you have blooms, what if they're pink and you want them blue or the other way around? Let's talk about soil amendments. Similar to fertilizer, this is somewhat general information because so much is determined what's already in your dirt, but in general, the same rules apply across the board. So here's the basics. The bloom color is determined by two things, soil pH and the presence of aluminum. Now I know we're going back to like high school chemistry class with the periodic table, but it's science that makes it work. So just stick with me. If you don't know what the pH level of your soil is, you can get a quick and easy test from a garden center or the extension office. The general rule of thumb is that if your pH is above 6.0, you'll see pink blooms. If you're below 6.0, you'll see blue. Now again, this is just a general rule of thumb because there are some exceptions. One note on those pink blooms, if you're in that six to 7.0 pH range, you're still technically in acidic or basic soil, but you're gonna see pink blooms. So when you hear alkaline are pink and acidic soils promote blue, it's only about 75% correct. So just be aware that if you're in that range between six and seven, you'll probably still see pink blooms. So if that's you, or if you're in a pH above 7.0 and you want blue blooms, here's what you do. Buy a soil acidifier or aluminum sulfate from your local garden center. This is gonna lower the pH of your soil so that you have an acidic soil below a pH of 6.0. Once you're below six, the plant is then able to absorb aluminum from the soil, which is what actually turns the blooms blue or blue purple, depending on what variety you have. So we're back in chemistry class with this aluminum absorption, but it's the element that actually makes it happen. So remember a second ago that I said there are exceptions and that even if you're below 6.0, you'll get pink flowers. Well, it's because you might have an aluminum deficiency. If this is the case, then you've got to add that aluminum sulfate to make sure the element is present to produce those blue blooms. A pH below 6.0 plus that presence of aluminum and you'll have blue blooms. So what if you wanna go the other way? You have naturally blue blooms, but you want pink. Super easy, you just add garden lime. Find it at pretty much any local garden center and you are good to go. 
the most common questions that I get about color change are how long it takes and how often to apply that soil amendment to speed up the process. Now, I sort of have to take the cop-out answer again and say that it depends on your soil, but it's true. So if your natural pH is 6.3 and you want blue blooms, you'll see them a lot faster than if you have a neutral pH or 7.3. So just start with that soil test to start setting expectations. It could be as early as the next bloom cycle or it could be 18 plus months. Now, as far as how often you can apply, there are a couple of things to consider. First, just follow the package instructions. It's the safest way to stay in line. And if you know that you're pretty far off that 6.0 pH level and want to apply more frequently, still follow the instructions for the amount, but then you can increase the frequency a little bit. One thing to know is that that aluminum sulfate that you apply to the lower the pH and add aluminum to the soil is high in salt. Too much salt can also produce a green shrub instead of flowers. So if you're adding a lot of aluminum sulfate and you're not seeing many blooms, get that soil tested and ask them to check the soil salinity. You want that soil levels or that EC reading to be between one and three. That said, if your salt levels are good and your soil pH isn't quite where you want it, feel free to add a little bit more frequently. All in all, just be patient. It's not gonna happen overnight, but I promise you will get there. So I hope that this helps break down some of the more scientific details behind how fertilizers and soil amendments work with hydrangeas. I know that it's a lot to take in, so feel free to watch this a few times. And remember, soil amendments and fertilizers are different. So always fertilize and then add a soil amendment if you wanna change your bloom color. Any more questions? Feel free to comment below and remember to share and subscribe, like all of our videos for all the hydrangea fun. Thank you so much everyone and have a fantastic day. Thank you.